No, no, not 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 yay it was the last one. That's a different thing. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to the center what do we call the Center for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley. <laughs> I I wanted I almost slipped into the old church of religious science thing. Sorry about that. Okay. It's everything's improv today. You like that? Okay. So why don't you stand and sing the opening song with us, which is I Am Enough, a Rick Dale special. <laughs> song. Let's say it together. I am enough. enough. We need to remember that. We are enough every moment of every day because why? Because we are spiritual beings. We are enough. So hello everyone and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living Capistrano Valley in absolutely beautiful San Clemente. And I'm affirming that because you ever know when you have to really appreciate something, you have to go away to come back to appreciate it. Mom and I went to the desert this weekend, 111. And as we drove in back home yesterday and the cool breeze of San Clemente brushed against my skin, I was so grateful, so grateful to live in this beautiful community. So I'm so delighted that you're here this morning and uh, whoever you are, Whatever path you're on, you're welcome here because we are an all-inclusive center. We are non-denominational and we respect the path that you are on. So um, welcome everyone, welcome home. So we start the service with our flames of faith and we'll do that right now. Yes. <laughs> 
We perform this ceremony to pro to, that promotes the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all people and all faiths, all sentient beings come from the one great universal presence that we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and the practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the four noble truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and the path of peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as practitioner Dave Friedman lights that last candle, please let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. morning join me in prayer <clears throat> what I know is that there is a single source of life a single source of energy the single source of love from which we are all cut as it is in through and as every single one of us. Can you feel it? It's real. <clears throat> so knowing that this is truly all there is and that we are one with it, we are one with all that is and we are one as we focus here this morning, the people in the room, the people online. We are here as one. Listening to the beautiful message as it speaks to us as individuals and we get whatever we need to get from it. We are uplifted by the music and we are grown and bonded by the community. And knowing that this morning is exactly as it's supposed to be. We accept that as perfection. We accept that as what is. And we accept that we are as it is. And we are in also creation as to what happens here. Knowing that this is the truth that has been supplied to us, given to us, <clears throat> as it works through us, from divine mind itself. I lovingly place it back into the fertile fields that is the law, the activity that takes our thoughts and makes them real for us here. And knowing that this is already done, I speak on behalf of everyone listening and accept it 
and love it and experience it in joy. And repeat after me or with me. And so it is. And so it is. Over here, Dave. Stand over here so they can see it. New guy. Read this with me, please. I transcend to the totality of all, inclusion made manifest, and so it is. And now we're going to read the Declaration of Principles. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence, operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being, now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates on a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and by every other person to create health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. I use it now, and I rejoice in it. And so it is. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dave. As you can see, we're having our practitioners do more um, on the Sunday platform, so we're so thrilled about that. So I, we have not seen this person for a long time, and I am just thrilled that he is here. Um, let's give a very warm welcome to Harold Payne. I personally would like to thank Hans for uh, donating his guitar today because I came from San Pedro this morning and realized that I had not left my guitar in the car the night before. <laughs> and uh, so Hans came to the rescue, as did Josh. Thank you. sure if it's on it's gonna whether it comes on or not it will be a security blanket for me <laughs> uh, only for me because this band has got everything covered we we'll get a few seconds if it doesn't come on then I'll just use it as the intro Right here, right now We are all connected somehow Even a whisper in the dark Becomes a prayer that reaches out Touches our hearts A rising tide lifts us on Every drop of water helps to keep the flow When you make a ripple in the river of life We will all be lifted Lifted by the rising tide We all have dreams of a world where we can live in peace And each act of kindness builds a bridge That leads us to the common ground Between our differences A rising tide lifts us all Every drop of water helps to keep the flow When you make a ripple in the river of life We will all be lifted 
Lifted by the rising tide I'm holding on to what I know that we can be In a sea of possibility Oh, a rising tide lifts us all Every drop of water helps to keep the flow When you make a ripple in the river of life We will all be lifted Lifted by the rising tide It's gonna lift us all Every drop of water helps to keep the flow When you make a ripple We'll all be lifted, lifted by the rising tide, lifted by the rising tide, hey, lifted by the rising tide, I'm gonna be lifted, lifted by the rising tide, lifted by the rising tide. Thank you, Harold Payne. I have not had the pleasure of being with you on the platform. Thank you so much. That was wonderful, wonderful. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I am Reverend Alice Reed, and this is my second Sunday here with you. Yay! <laughs> oh, I'm really uh, thrilled to be with you here on uh, this Sunday. We I don't know about you, but I had a little bit of a rocky entry <laughs> getting here this morning. We, uh, we did our mic check, and uh, I got a phone call in the middle of the mic check. And it turned out that my guy who was riding his bike here had a flat tire. So <laughs> he had uh, tried to avoid a car that wasn't paying attention and uh, ran into a curb. And he's OK. And uh, yay. <laughs> he's OK, but I had to go get him. Uh, mic'd. You know, I had the mic gun, and I'm all mic'd up and <laughs> in the car. And I'm, don't know your area too well yet. So it was. It's an interesting way for me. That's not how I usually like to start my Sunday mornings. <laughs> but I will tell you that it's also it was an opportunity for me to give you a wonderful PSA for cyclists that when you're on the road, please be careful and look out for them. Because one of them might be my guy. <laughs> uh, September 12th <clears throat> is a very auspicious day for me. And so um, there are two things, actually two very life-changing things that happened for me on September 12th. And the first one was the birth of my son, Jonathan Reed. <laughs> He's my firstborn. I was 19 when I had him. He's 40 years old today. And I can honestly say that um, bringing him, being the vehicle from which he passed through, <laughs> Bringing him into this world changed the trajectory of my life. Absolutely, I was not headed in a good direction. <laughs> I was a troubled youth. And that pregnancy really saved my life because it gave me a greater purpose. It gave me a greater sense of what I was here to do. And, um, and he's been a treasure in my life all these 40 years. So happy birthday, Jonathan Reed. <laughs> the, uh, the second life-changing thing that happened for me, I think happened for a lot of us, it was uh, 20 years ago today that many of you may have had the same experience I did, that you were waking up the, fa the day before the unthinkable had happened. We had an attack on the U.S. soil and the Twin Towers had completely dissolved into rubble, and along with them, 3,000 lives. And I 
found myself, in a, on that day, on, on September 12th, I found myself in a place, as my life had been moving up until that point, that I was numb. Life had become this churning of doing and being and trying to get things done and trying to uh, function at a high level. And there was a lot going on in my life at the time. I was working for an international nonprofit. I was a, kind of a big cheese. I was their operations officer. And I was working in the US office. We were doing really great work around the world. And I was uh, struggling because one of the, you know, the woman that I worked for was a brilliant youth development expert, absolutely brilliant. And her brilliance created a high demand on the staff. Have you ever worked with somebody like that? There's, you know they're really doing their work in the world, but they're requiring a lot of support to do that work. And that was, that was how my job was. I worked in Washington, D.C., and I found myself commuting from Baltimore to my job. And that commute on a good day was just over an hour, and on average, not so good day, about two hours to get to work. So I, I could be in the car four hours every day. Um, at the time, my 40-year-old was just turning 20, and he was in his first year in college, second year in college, yes, yeah, second year in college, and I had a teenager at home that wasn't doing so great. She was really struggling, as many teens around that 15, 16-year-old mark can sometimes struggle. Um, and then my husband at the time had been diagnosed with late stage Lyme disease. He hadn't been uh, diagnosed early enough to catch it, and so he was really suffering. There were days where he didn't even know his name. And uh, I got to go to work every day and be that big cheese, you know, be in charge. And on September 11th, I got to the office early, and as I was sitting at my desk, somebody ran into my office and told me something horrible had happened, and we went out to the lobby, and I turned on the TV just in time to watch the second tower drop. Now, I'm in D.C. We hear that the Pentagon has been hit. I've got staff that are very worried about their family who live in the area, so I send them home, and I decide to stay in the office the rest of the day because I know what the, tra excuse me, the traffic's going to be like trying, when people are trying to get out of D.C. And I, and I drive home kind of numb. And I go to bed that night, still, kind of numb. And the, and, the, and the numbness wasn't just from the event, it was from everything that had led me up to that moment. Because life had been really challenging, and there was so much going on, that the only way that I could really function was to sort of dial down the stress so that I didn't have to feel. It was kind of in an automaton place. But the next morning I got up and I began to look at those images on television, the same in images that you all saw, and I began to see the outpouring of love and concern, of people lifting each other up, of all walks of life. And something cracked open in me. Something, the walls, my own walls came tumbling down and my heart opened up to the outpouring of love that I was seeing. And I think, at least at this stage of my life, this was the first time in, in my lifetime, at least, at, at the ripe age of 39, that I was seeing and experiencing a worldwide phenomena of deep care and compassion. And the reason I tell you that story is because it was just a few weeks later that I found myself in my first Science of Mind church. And it was that event that absolutely changed the trajectory of my life. That I showed up in a Science of Mind church. My mother had been going for a number of years, and she would call me every once in a while, gosh, there's this great minister. You should come. You'd love it. I had been on the spiritual path for a while, but I hadn't really 
been, I had actually never heard of Science of Mind before my mother told me about it. I'd been to Unity, I'd done some work with the Quakers, I did some, uh, with, I did a lot of work with the Course in Miracles, but I'd never heard of Science of Mind. And when I walked into a Science of Mind church, I knew, I absolutely knew that I was home. There was something here that resonated, that made sense, that brought together all the different things that I had explored up until this point. And I learned in this teaching, it began to, I began to understand and I began to learn that, that I had a direct impact on my experience, that I had a responsibility for what I experienced. And not responsibility in the traditional sense, but responsibility in that I had the ability to respond and choose the way I wanted to respond. So in the wake of 9-11, in the wake of the, the violence and the heartbreak and the compassion that rose out of that, I made a conscious choice early on and I vowed never to go to sleep again, to never numb out, to not allow myself to go unconscious and I will tell you that I made good on that vow. I was, I was licensed as a minister six years later. And I have continued in this walk in ministry. I have had the pleasure and the great honor to witness others as they make that same choice, if not vow, to stay awake. And I tell you this story today because it feels very auspicious. <laughs> it feels very auspicious that on September 12th, I had these two events that, that really helped me to wake up and that we're talking about this theme this month of reaching higher. Reaching higher. And, and we're looking at this idea today of transcend and include. And when we... Look, talk about transcendence, we're not necessarily talking about levels and hierarchies of spiritual practice. We, when we are working with our own spiritual evolution, what I have come to understand is that everything that I learn, all the experience that I have up until the moment when I'm ready to embrace and, and uh, have my consciousness expand yet again, everything that I've done up until that point comes with me as well, so that it really is a transcendence and an inclusion process, that we are always building on the consciousness that we created. Ernest Holmes is famous for his quote, no, he's famous for saying that our philosophy is open at the top. And, and what does that mean? It means that we're never complete, that we always have an opportunity to continue to, to grow and evolve and transcend, and that we include everything up until that point. And so um, when I look at the teaching symbol, you may have seen it once or twice if you've been coming around to this philosophy. If you're new to this ph philosophy, our teaching symbol is a V, it has two lines through the middle of it, and there's a circle around it. And so what I know about that teaching symbol is that it represents this creative process. It represents the, the power and the movement of spirit as, as it is expressing itself. And so if you'll indulge me, both at home and here in the sanctuary, put your arms up like this and recognize that you are the point of creation, that that V, that dissension of spirit comes to this point, and that you are God in form. You are God walking out its expression as only you can. And so when we talk about this idea of a philosophy that's open at the top, it doesn't mean that it's only open at the top and I open myself up to this thing that has to come down through me, but that I'm actually opening myself up to that highest vibration 
as well. And so the, when we look at our teaching symbol and it has a circle around it, it tells us that, it's, that God isn't just in this top layer, but God is in the law or consciousness. And God is in, you know, we, we talk about in the teaching symbol, and I had hoped to show you a slide, but it did not convert well when I got here today. <laughs> but when we look at this teaching symbol, it, it, it seems to have three parts, spirit, soul, and body, that the, the highest ideal, the purest expression of God is at the spirit level. The soul is that place that actually receives that purest and highest idea, and then it manifests as the body. And one could start to think that there's this hierarchy of good. But it's not a hierarchy. Instead, what it represents by putting the circle around that idea of this creative process that is always coming and into form, by putting a circle on it, what I know is that it is how we experience God. So sometimes I'm experiencing God as my body. And sometimes, like when I'm in meditation, I'm experiencing God through my consciousness. And sometimes in those really rare moments when I forget where I end and where spirit begins, well, then I'm experiencing the full measure of spirit. And so we have this beautiful teaching, this philosophy that allows us to see God in all the things that we experience. The devastation of 9-11, that the terrible thing that happened, I would have chosen to have my awakening any other way. But what I can tell you is that I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for what I have come to understand as the volunteers, the volunteers that on the soul and spirit level released this plane of existence so that others could wake up. Because I don't believe that I'm the only one who had the experience of really waking up when that happened. And so as we begin to look at this idea of transcend and include, it offers us an opportunity to see life experiencing itself as us through whatever it is we're experiencing. So this morning I got to experience God as having a flat tire and needed me to pick him up. (laughs) And... um, As we move through our life, we have this opportunity to use this philosophy to create greater meaning in our lives, to begin to understand that what we see on the physical plane is just the tip of the iceberg, albeit an iceberg that's inverted. And that there's so much more to everything that we experience in life. There's so much more to that than meets the eye. And when we can allow ourselves to pause and maybe even step back from whatever condition it is that we see in front of us, then it allows us to step into that greater relationship with creation, to even co-create with it. One of my um, favorite quotes of Ernest Holmes is often, Ernest Holmes is often misquoted. You might recognize this quote as there's a power for good and you can use it. But that's the misquote. The actual quote is there's a power for good in the universe greater than you and you can use it. And that's the circle. That's the power that we're always working with. That's the ability for us to have an experience here at the level of our physicality and know that there's something deeper and more profound than meets the eye. So as we look at this idea of transcending and including, right, I, 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 accept the experience that I'm having in the moment, 
I feel it on my physical body, I might have an emotional experience, and I allow myself to use it to open up. And what I found is that I can open up, usually it's in one of two ways. I can choose to be conscious in a situation intentionally. I can, you know, use my marvelous mind and my beautiful heart to be present in the moment, to really see what's happening before me and to, to look at what the bigger picture is. But sometimes, and I don't know, maybe none of you have had this experience, <laughs> but sometimes the bottom drops out and I got to learn how to fly real quick. <laughs> And I have come to understand that that experience of contraction when things are difficult and challenging and I'm having trouble navigating the, the different circumstances that are going on, it's usually because my consciousness is ready to expand and the container that I have created for it is no longer large enough. I would like to suppose that the things that are going on in the world right now are really helping us to try to break free of that small container that we as humanity have created. It is time for us to rise up. It is time for us to reach higher. But we need, in, in that process of transcendence, we must include each and every one of us. We must include the heartbreak as well as the joy. We must include the neighbor that I don't agree with because we have different political ideas and the people that agree with me. We must find that larger container for us to be able to bring everybody up. And so when we talk about this idea, you'll probably hear me say it every time I'm on the platform, we have this beautiful vision of a world that works for everyone. And it's not just a, a fancy big idea, it's a vision. It's a vision that we carry as a philosophy and a movement and it's a vision that is calling us forward, each in our own individual way, to walk that out. And some of us will walk that out in big public ways. And some of us, it'll be just the circle of influence right in your own backyard. But there are no degrees of greatness in walking out that vision, in being open to a vision of a world that works for all and finding your place in how you're going to help that happen. What I know about vision is, if I think I got this, it's no longer a vision. <laughs> a vision is something that requires me to call upon what Ernest Holmes talked about, that universal power that is greater than me so that I can walk it out as God in form as that one point of light of which there are many, many millions of, point of points of light. And each one of us has an opportunity to inhabit that. So my invitation to you this week is to look at the vision that you have for your life. Look at the thing that makes your heart sing. Look at the thing that opens up your mind and allow your vision to grow, to expand, so that you can be the place where God shows up, where God is revealed, where spirit is expressed. And you can do it in simple little ways, through kindness and compassion, through recognizing that there's a lot of people carrying a lot of weight these days. There's a lot going on in the world. I'll close with this story. You may have heard it before. There was a 
fellow who was on the subway, and he, as he was, um, got on the subway, he noticed there was a man who was completely ignoring his children, and the children were jumping off the walls and screaming and running up and down the train, and he, he was the passenger that had stepped on to the subway and was noticing this man's inability to do what he needed to do to take care of those kids, decided that he needed to talk to that man. And so he went up and he sat down next to him and he began to speak, but the man kind of turned to him absentmindedly and he said, oh, I'm so sorry about my children. We just came home from the hospital. Their mothers just died. You don't know the burden someone else is carrying. However, if you choose to reach higher, to not make those judgments and assess, uh, assumptions about people, but to be open-minded and to be with someone with compassion until you know, and even after you know, those are the places where we begin to do the little tiny baby steps of creating a world that works for everyone. So my invitation, look at your vision. What is your vision for life and how are you walking it out? What is it that is calling you forward and is it big enough? And walk through your day with kindness and compassion. You don't know where someone else has been. Thank you very much. Now, I would like to close us with prayer, and then we'll invite uh, this amazing guy to share some of his gifts with us, Harold Payne. So if you will, close your eyes. Take a deep breath. Lower your gaze if that's your choice. <sighs> Breathing in and letting out. Breathing in and letting go. Breathing in and simply releasing. And allowing yourself to be that receptive place where you rise up, where you allow yourself to reach higher, to connect with the consciousness, connect with the compassion, to connect with vision, to connect with that absolute and self-existent cause that wants to experience itself by means of you. And so I know as you sit here today as you open your heart and open your mind and allow yourself to be that place of greater revelation of possibility that each one is met exactly where they are that each one's openness within their heart space that each one's relationships that each one's experiences are divinely supported that Spirit meets us exactly where we are and that in every experience that we have as we walk out this thing called life that we allow ourselves to do so being that place where God shows up being that point of creation and expression so that God may experience itself as each one of us and what I know is that God never never, never expresses itself, never calls upon itself to be expressed by each one without divinely supporting it. So I know for each one that we feel that divine support as we walk this thing called life out, as we walk out the rest of our day and the rest of our week, I know that each one is in the right place with the right people at the right time doing the good work the work of expressing God uniquely and authentically. And so I give great thanks for the willingness and the openness to be that place, to be that expression, to be that place of kindness and compassion and vision. For it, I know that this is good and very good. And it is with a grateful and surrendered heart that I simply anchor this prayer in the law. And together we say, and so it is. Thank you very much, Carol Payne.
Good to know that the platform is in good hands and good feet. The birth of a child, the events of 9-11, and walking into a science of mind church are things that can change the trajectory, tra trajectory of your life. And everything that happens to you can help you reach higher and awaken to a brighter light. And even a flat tire that can't curb your spiritual appetite. There's a winding road where I learn to run, where the race is long. With every step we're taking, with every choice we're making, with every bend in the road, we get stronger. We can reach up, we can reach out, we can show this world what we're all about. a dead end street mm, where I learned to play but I found my way yeah, I can fly away below the street lights fading ahead is my future waiting to the fears I can see it oh I can see it hey. we can reach up we can reach out we can show this world what we're all about we can do We can share the dream, we can share the dream. Yes, we can share it, we can share the dream, we can share the dream. Yes, we can, we can share the dream, we can share the dream. Share it, we can share the dream, we can share the dream. We can share the dream, we can share the dream. Share in our future, we can share the dream, we can share the dream. We can reach up. We can reach out, we can show this world what we're all about. We can do anything we put our minds to. We can be anything we want to be. We can reach up, hey, we can reach out. We can show this world what we're all about. Thank you. Thank you with the incredible crew and for Hans and the band for rolling with my, for getting my guitar today. Thank you so much. Thank you. You know, I don't know any other 
artists that can sit and listen to a service and write a song about it and then come up and perform. I mean, you do that so well. You've done it every time I've seen you. It's like, let's give him another hand, the wonderful <laughs> Howard Payne. Thank you, beautiful. Thank you so much. So blessed to have you today. So uh, it's time now for our offering. And so uh, if we would take our gift, our tithe, our donation, and um, take it in your hand and put it against your heart because it's all love. Everything is love. And your gift is received with such joy and such appreci appreciation. So we uh, have a basket by each door. There's one right here, and then there's two at the back of the room and one at the front for you to place your donation in and your contribution. And let us say now together our uh, offertory. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply, and it symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. Oh, oh, Missy, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, Missy Hessen, our guest musician, thank you. And we have Jules on the piano today, thank you so much. David Page and uh, Ed Cuspy, our wonderful band, thank you so much, it's so beautiful. That was, that was so gorgeous. And of course, we always want to thank, um, thank you, Clark, for manning our cameras today, appreciate that. And Josh is in the back and so is Mary and so is Dave Friedman back there guiding everyone around, thank you so much. Wade and Kimberly will uh, be do our invitations, I wanna thank you. Uh, you can come up now, I'm going to, uh, our practitioners for today. Yes, let's give everyone a hand. Every So wonderful. So our practitioners today are Hans Smith, Cheryl Lyman, and she has been holding the high watch for each and every one of you this morning during our service. That means that she's back there just op op keeping us open at the top and praying for our to receive all the wonderful message. So, and we also have Dave Friedman. So two will be at the tables on the side and one will be in the tranquility room after the service for your personal prayer. Uh, if things are going great, then you can go to them and say thank you and make it greater. <laughs> but if you have some um, obstacles or some mental blocks happening or things are not just exactly right what you want, 
your vision to look like, have a prayer with the practitioner. They are there to serve you. Okay, so now some invitation from Wayne and Kimberly. Well, for today's invitations, you don't have to get dressed to the nines, but we are going to invite you six ways to Sunday. Put your two cents worth in at Conscious Connection right here in this room from the service, or after the service from 12 to 1230. Get together with Mary and friends from all four corners of the earth for a brief discussion about today's topic. Genius is 1% inspiration and 99% perspiration. So get together. We had book study with Mary on Wednesday mornings on Zoom from uh, 10 to 1130. The current book under discussion is The Knowing, 11 Lessons to Understand the Quiet Urges of Your Soul. Contact Mary Brogdon if you have any questions because two heads are better than one. And life begins at 40, and the people at Shifting Sands are enjoying life and a roundtable discussion on Thursday mornings from 10.30 to 12.30. Two's company, three's a crowd, and four's a Zoom meeting, so join them on Zoom. <laughs> a picture is worth a thousand words. So picture a beautiful life and share your thousand words with Coming Home, Awakening to Spirit, a group setting focused on an increased awareness of the love and beauty of our oneness with life and the whole nine yards. Meets at 8 a.m. on Zoom. If you've been at sixes and sevens regarding sexuality, get to cloud nine with our LGBTQ group. See Kathy Story or Tony Sparks for details. If you're looking for a new 1020, well, our executive suites at Talega upstairs are a perfect 10, and you can be inside 24 seven. We have several suites available to lease, and if you know of anyone who is interested in the freedom of working from a private office with all the suites benefits, all in one fell swoop, please have them take five and call Mary Brogdon or Claudia Nelson between Monday through Friday, eight to five, except 12 to one. And this just in at the 11th hour, calling all creatives, show the world that you are not just a one-trick pony. Reverend Karen is planning on holding the annual holiday boutique and one-stop shop in December, coinciding with our annual holiday brunch. So now is the time to start crafting your beautiful creations, show off your talents and creativity, sell your wares, and get your own 15 minutes of fame with our spiritual family during this holiday season. High five. And now, back to square one, let's sing the closing song. Stand up, rise up, oh my soul. Rise up, oh my soul. Rise up, oh my soul. Rise up, oh my soul, and spirit love. And know with me now that wherever we go, we are that walking emanation of spirit. So wherever we go, God is, and so are we, and so it is. And so it is. Yeah. <laughs>